So what did we do in our previous lectures? We did the Rutherford's modular pattern, okay? And then we did the drawbacks of Rutherford's modular pattern, right? Now today we are going to go to the next topic, which is electromagnetic radiation. Now, what do we understand by electromagnetic radiation? It is the radiation which is simultaneously subjected to electric and magnetic fields. Right? So any radiation which is simultaneously subjected to an electrofield, electric field and kept in a magnetic field, they are known as electromagnetic radiations. Now in this we say that the electric and the magnetic fields they are perpendicular to each other and also they are perpendicular to the propagation of the wave. If the direction in which the wave is travelling that is perpendicular to the electric field as well as the magnetic field as you can see here in the diagram. Okay, so as you can see here in the diagram it is simultaneously it has the electric and the magnetic field which all are running perpendicular to each other. Now if you are doing the characteristics of radiations, electromagnetic radiations, what do we say? Characteristics number one, all electromagnetic radiations, all electromagnetic radiations are perpendicular to each other, that is they are perpendicular to the electric field, they are perpendicular to the magnetic field and it is also the propagation of the wave is also perpendicular, right? And secondly, all electromagnetic waves, they travel with the speed of light, that is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meters per second. Okay, and also electromagnetic radiations do not need a material medium to propagate. Do not need a material medium to propagate. Right? Or in other words, what do we say? That they can also travel in vacuum. When we are talking of any electromagnetic wave, they are characterized by the following measurements. Let's say this is one fixed point, okay? And or we can say that this is the source of electromagnetic radiation. Over here, when the electromagnetic radiation is visualized, the propagation of the electromagnetic radiation is something like this. In a similar manner, as you have tied a rope on this fixed point and you give it a jerk. When you give a jerk, the pattern which would be seen would be something like this. That is what electromagnetic radiations are. Okay? Now when we are looking at the measurements which we do for the electromagnetic radiation, the first one that is known as wavelength. Wavelength is given by lambda. Okay. What is wavelength? It is the distance between two crests. Crest is the upward displacement of the wave and trough is the downward displacement of the wave. So distance between two crests or distance between two troughs that is known as lambda. Right? So what are we saying? What is lambda? It is 
distance between two crests or two troughs that is known as lambda or the wavelength. The unit because it is a distance so the unit which is used is meters but meter is a very big unit to measure this so we use smaller units like Armstrong's. One Armstrong that is equal to 1 into 10 raised to power minus 10 meters right or we use picometer. 1 picometer that is equal to 10 raised to power minus 12 meters. We can use nanometer. 1 into 10 raised to power minus 9 meters. So generally the units which we are going to use to measure wavelength, they are going to be these. Right? Then the second characteristic is frequency. The second characteristic which we are going to study That is frequency. Frequency is denoted by nu and frequency that is the number of cycles the wave takes in one second. The number of cycles the wave takes in one second that is frequency. The unit which we used over here is per second or also we use another unit which is hertz. Okay? Then the third characteristic is velocity of light. As we just said that the electromagnetic radiations they have the same velocity that is velocity of light. And velocity of light has a fixed value that is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meters per second and it is denoted by small c. So we have done three characteristics over here. Let's look at the relationship between three. When we are looking at the relationship between lambda frequency and velocity of light, we say that lambda that is equal to c upon nu. Right? So you can see over here that the wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency. Okay? So what is the relationship? Lambda that is equal to c upon nu. Then the fourth characteristic we have is Wave number. Wave number that is represented by u bar and it is the reciprocal of wavelength. Right? So we will have the unit of wave number as per meters. Per meter that is going to be the unit. Okay, then after wave number we have another characteristic which is known as amplitude. Another characteristic which we have that is amplitude. Amplitude is denoted by A and it is the height of the crest or depth of the trough. Right? It is the height of the crest or depth of the trough. This is also measured in this is going to be measured in meters. It has because it is the distance so it has the same unit as what? As the wavelength. Right? And then after that uh, we have another this thing which is known as time period. Time period is denoted by T and it is the time taken for the cycle to complete uh, sorry time taken
for the wavelength to complete one cycle. Right? Time taken for the wavelength to complete one cycle. And mathematically, time period is given by 1 upon frequency. It is the reciprocal of frequency. Right? So, how many? We've done six characteristics of a wave. The first one is lambda, wavelength, distance between two crests or two trucks. The second one is frequency, number of cycles the wave takes in one second. Then the velocity of light. Velocity of light, whether we are talking of in material medium or we are talking of vacuum, it has the same value. There is very slight difference in vacuum travels with the speed of 2.8 to 2.9. So it is almost the same speed. Then the relationship, this is important because this would be used further. Lambda that is equal to C upon mu. Then the wave number, wave number that is equal to 1 upon lambda. Then the amplitude, that is the height of the crest or depth of the trough and the time period. Again time period is important because we might get this expression in one of the questions, the numericals which we are going to solve for this section. So time period that is equal to time taken for the wavelength to complete one cycle. Okay. Now after doing this, we have, we know what electromagnetic radiation is. So electromagnetic radiations they are characterized mainly by two things. One is the lambda and the other one that is frequency. Okay, so let's go on to arrangement of electromagnetic radiations. They are not one electromagnetic radiation, but there are several electromagnetic radiations which are arranged in order of increasing frequencies or uh, increasing wavelengths, either of the two. So, so let's go on to the next topic which is electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum. What do we understand by electromagnetic spectrum? Electromagnetic spectrum is the arrangement of electromagnetic radiations. Arrangement of electromagnetic radiations in order of their decreasing frequencies. In order of decreasing frequencies or increasing wavelengths, that is what electromagnetic spectrum is. So, if we are looking at the arrangement let's see how we can uh, talk of the arrangement of electromagnetic radiations. The one which has the lowest wavelength right? The one which has the lowest wavelength, let's keep it over here and we are saying that lambda over here is increasing. That is, it is going from 10 raised to power minus 11 to 10 raised to power 3. Right? So what are we saying? Decreasing frequencies or increasing wavelengths. So frequency that has to decrease, uh, sorry, the frequency will decrease. So frequency that is decreasing from 3 to 10 raised to power 21 to 3 into 10 raised to power 7. Okay, so this is the order. Now when we are talking of the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation with lowest wavelength, in some of the books cosmic rays is given, but according to the new concept, the one which has the lowest wavelength that is gamma rays. Okay, so one which we are going to have the lowest wavelength, that is the gamma rays. Then after that is the X-rays and after X-rays we have the UV region that is the ultraviolet region and then we have the visible region. This is one of the important regions because this is all what we can see. 
the visible region. Visible region consists of different colors. Representing uh, the colors of a rainbow, that is Vipyore. Right? And Vipyore means what? Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. That is what Vipyore is. It approximately starts from 400 nanometers and ends up to 700 nanometers. Right? So violet has 400 and it keeps on increasing from violet to red. Then after visible region is the infrared region. Infrared region. After the infrared we come to microwaves. And then the radio waves. Emission spectrum. What happens in emission spectrum is 
that the emission spectrum it gives us bright light uh, bright colored lights or we can say it gives us bright lines okay and the background over here is dark so emission spectrum it is giving us bright lines on a dark background right and emission spectrum is obtained when radiations emitted by the excited substance they have been taken a source of light we uh, help that source of light to pass through a prism right when it passes through a prism and we put a screen then we see that there are various bright lines which are coming on a dark screen so that is what an emission spectrum is so how it is uh, formed it is obtained when radiations emitted by excited substance are analyzed with the help of a spectrometer or spectroscope spectroscope is a device to analyze the spectrum okay whereas the second type we have is absorption spectrum as the word over here is suggesting absorption means that we are giving a source of white light that source of white light is first passed through a medium that medium may be gas or it may be a solution so what that solution does is the solution that is going to absorb certain radiations right now if it is absorbing radiations from the visible region then in this case we do not get a colored spectrum right there are going to be dark lines okay so in absorption spectrum we say that it gives dark lines on a bright background dark lines on a bright background so this is the difference also between the two and as i just said that in absorption spectrum the white light is first absorbed and then emitted whereas in emission spectrum the light is emitted passed through a prism and whatever we get that is analyzed with the help of a spectroscope and on screen we see bright or colored lines on a uh, you can say on a dark background right so the emission and the absorption spectrum they can be shown as it is shown in the figure we can see over here that the bright lines the colored lines they can be seen on the emission spectrum and the dark lines they are seen in the absorption spectrum okay now when we doing the emission spectrum the emission spectrum is further classified into two right so we are saying that the emission spectrum is classified into two the first one is known as continuous spectrum what do we understand by continuous spectrum over here the light which we are going to take we are going to take a source of light source of white light this white light in continuous spectrum uh, we see that this white light that when it is passed through a prism it is going to give us the colors of the rainbow that is we are getting a spectrum with all the seven colors of the rainbow with pure okay so violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red in this case when we are coming at the interface of two colors the violet that is going to merge with indigo indigo is going to merge with blue blue is going to merge with green green with yellow yellow with orange and orange with red so there is a continuous spectrum we cannot see any gap between the colors that is why it is known as continuous spectrum okay when one color merges into other that is what vibure is just like that of a rainbow the second type of spectrum which we have that is known as a discontinuous or line spectrum it is known as a discontinuous or line spectrum now in this case uh, the source taken is not 
the white light, not the sun, but the source taken over here may be gas or vapors of a liquid. Right? So, when we are taking the vapors of a chemical substance, we heat it in a flame or in an electric arc. Right? And then after that, the radiations which are emitted by heating these in chemical substances in electric arc or in what we are saying, or in heat, we are heating them. So the uh, radiations which are emitted, they are analyzed in this continuous spectrum. So when we are talking of this continuous spectrum, we say that the light which is emitted is passed through the prism. is passed through the prism and we see that there are specific lines observed. These lines are mostly bright lines because it's an emission spectrum. So we observe bright lines in the visible region. For example, when we are talking of sodium, we take the vapors of sodium and those vapors of sodium, the radiations which they emit, they are passed through the prism. We see yellow lines at a, uh, you can say, wavelength of 580 to 589 nanometers, right? So every atom over here, because we are analyzing atoms over here, we are not taking any source of light. So every atom over here has their own specific have their own specific spectrum. Okay, so that is the reason why these are also known as thumbprints. Right? They are also known as thumbprints of every atom because every atom have their own spectrum. And by analyzing the spectrum, we can quantitatively analyze, sorry, qualitatively analyze what the atom is. Okay? Sodium is going to give us a different spectrum. When we are talking of helium, it is going to give us a different spectrum. Or we are talking of, uh, say, lithium, that is going to give us a different spectrum. So every atom gives a different spectrum. A very good example of emission spectrum which was studied for the first time, the first emission spectrum which was studied, that was of hydrogen. So we will study today the spectrum of hydrogen, right? So when we are, dis we are studying the spectrum of hydrogen, we say that hydrogen is an example of Hydrogen is an example of emission spectrum. Okay? So, as I just told you, it was one of the first, uh, we say the first spectrum which was analyzed. Okay? Now, when we are talking of hydrogen, what we do over here is that we take an electric discharge. This electric discharge is passed through hydrogen gas. hydrogen gas and we see a blue radiation, blue color radiation or a blue light which is emitted. This blue light is passed through a prism. Okay? And when this blue light passes through a prism, a series of light or series of lines not light, series of lines were observed. So the hydrogen spectrum, one by one the scientists started studying them and one by one depending upon the transition, what do we understand by transition? That how the electron is jumping from a lower energy level to a higher energy level and then it falls back to the lower energy level. Okay, so when it is falling back to the lower energy level, it emits radiations. And that is how a series of lines were given. Depending upon these transitions, 
Various scientists gave different series, and those series are named on the names of the on the names of the scientists itself. Right? The first series which we had was Lyman series. Lyman series. Now for Lyman series, we say that the transition is from we say let's say this is the first shell N1, right? So N1 over here that is equal to 1 and the value of N2 can be anything greater than 1. So it can be 2, 3, 4 or anything. Now what is happening over here is we are saying that the electron jumps from the first to the next level and then it jumps back to the first level. During its jumping back to the first level it emits radiations and those radiations fall in the various region of the electromagnetic spectrum as for example when we are talking of Lyman series we say that they fall in the UV radiation right it falls in the UV region. Okay, then the second series was Bama series. Bama series, for Bama series, N1 that is equal to 2 and N2 that is equal to 3, 4, 5, and so on. And Bama series is the only series which falls in the visible region. It is the only series which falls in the visible region. Okay. Then uske baad, the next one which we have that is the Pastron series. For that N1 that is equal to 3 and N2 is equal to 4, 5, 6 and so on. This falls in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Then we have the bracket For bracket N1 that is equal to 4 and N2 is anything greater than 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. This also falls in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Right? And then we have fun. They all are after the name of the scientists. Okay? And for this N1 that is going to be equal to 5. And N2 is equal to 6, 7, 8 and so on. This also falls in the infrared region. Right? And then we have another series which is known as Humphrey. For Humphrey N1 that is going to be equal to 6. And N2 is equal to 7, 8, 9 and so on. And this also falls in the higher region. Okay. Now to understand that how do we get uh, the wavelength from the series so as to calculate where the uh, where it is lying in the electromagnetic spectrum. There was a scientist by the name of Riggs who gave us a mathematical expression. Right. So for that uh, what was the mathematical expression for this? It was given as mu bar is equal to 1 by lambda is equal to 109677 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square. Where n1 is the initial shell in which the electron is present and n2 is the final cell. The final shell. For Barber series specifically, 1 upon lambda that is equal to 109677, 1 upon 2 square minus 1 upon n2 square because for Barber the value of n1 that is going to be equal to 2. Right? So there were various transitions given. One thing which you have to Remember over here is the first initial four transitions of the power series so that while you are doing the calculations in your multiple choice questions it becomes easier for you. Right? So let's see the first
first four transitions of Barber series. Right? The first transition is from N2 is equal to 3 to N1 is equal to 2. Right? This transition that is, this is uh, specifically for hydrogen atom. So the first transition that can be named as H alpha. Okay? And this is the first line. Right? So we have seen over here that in the hydrogen spectrum, 
वी आर गेटिंग कलर्स वायलेट इंडिगो ब्लू एंड रेड गॉट इट सो दीज आर अ फ्यू लिटिल इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द हाइड्रोजन स्पेक्ट्रम वी विल डू अ लिटिल मोर व्हेन वी विल डू द बोहर्स ओके सो टुडे वी विल डू द